YouTube, what is up? It's your boy Kuzi. Welcome back to Phasmophobia. I'm going to be giving you the five things that you could do to instantly survive more ghost hunts. Tip number one, before you go into a single contract, bro, do me a favor. Go to your options. Go to audio. You see what this says right here? Do me a favor. If it says voice activation, turn your PC off. Throw it out the fucking window. If you're wondering why you die so much to the ghost hunting you, check this setting because if it's voice activation and the ghost starts hunting and you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And the ghost comes straight to you and is like, hello, motherfucker. That's probably why, buddy. Because when you have voice activation on, the ghost can hear you at all times. If you have push to talk on, the ghost only hears you if you press your push to talk button, which for me, it's my thumb mouse button. Most importantly, dude, if you play multiplayer a lot, it's just a common courtesy. Nobody wants to hear you crunching on your Doritos. They don't want to hear your little chihuahua barking in the background. God forbid, like a revenant is hunting, right? And it's just boom, boom, boom. And then your dog barks and the revenant is like, doo, 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 doo. Just, just turn on push to talk. It's just, it's so much better. I promise you just doing that right there, 25% survival rate increase, I promise you. Tip number two, ooh, we got tarot cards. Um, probably not gonna get a hunt in here because I'm gonna pull hangman, watch. Called it. Okay, just kidding. Anyways, uh, well, while we pull tarot cards, I will explain tip number two. Turn off your equipment when the ghost is hunting, okay? Because the ghost has a detection radius of five meters. Five meters on a small map is huge, okay? That's like from here to I don't even know where. I don't have my Phasmo measuring stick or anything like that, but it's, it's pretty far. And so anytime you have your equipment on, like your flashlight, or say you have your flashlight on and you've got your EMF reader in your hand and it's on, the ghost can detect that from up to five meters away disclaimer unless you're dealing with the yokai in which case it's two and a half meters but that's beside the point say you follow step number one and you got push to talk on even if you're not talking if you have your flashlight on the ghost is kind of gonna come straight to you anyways because it can detect your equipment so make sure you turn off your flashlight and just doing those two things bro you you don't even have to be in a hiding spot the ghost has no idea where where you are because it can't see you because it can't detect you i wanted to do this in like a in like a simplest to most like complex tip number three isn't going to be that complex and that is simply just using your equipment what i mean by that is using things that protect you like your sanity pills to restore your sanity your smudge sticks like for instance let me let me break down the smudge sticks in case you guys don't know the smudge stick prevents the ghost from targeting you for six seconds that's with the uh tier one uh it also prevents the ghost from hunting for 90 seconds unless you were dealing with a demon in which case it's prevented for 60 seconds or a spirit in which it will be prevented for 180 seconds or three minutes okay with the tier two it'll do that plus it will slow the ghost down for six seconds as well so it'll make the ghost just like slow and then the tier three completely stops the ghost in its tracks for six seconds i personally like the tier two just because it allows the ghost to keep moving and so it gives me a chance to get away better but this is going to be your bread and butter for surviving bro so if you're a low level where you don't have smudges unlocked check out my uh xp farm guide where i talk about the camp woodwind strat or, or maybe you've heard about it but just do that watch that video and put that into practice you'll be able to unlock smudges in no time the crucifixes are great for just preventing the ghost from hunting in general if you have the tier three it'll stop the ghost from hunting during a cursed hunt so like for instance if if i were to pull a death card right now and i had the um the tier three crucifix set up in the ghost room which i have no idea where that is right now it would stop that hunt but tier one and tier two don't do that Tier two, you get two prevented hunts. Tier one, you get one prevented hunt. So yeah, using your equipment is gonna be huge for you on surviving uh, more hunts. Now we're gonna get a little bit more technical, all right? So tip number four, managing your sanity. You always start at 100% sanity. Anytime you are at 100% sanity, the ghost will not hunt you, unless you were dealing with the demon, but that's a, that's a different, I have a different video for that, okay? As long as you're at 100% sanity, you're fine. So whenever it comes to managing your sanity, there's multiple things you got to know. So strap on, bro. What did he say? Get your notepad out. All right. So first thing, you got to know that when the ghost does a ghost event, it drains your sanity. And that depends on what type of ghost is doing the ghost event. If it's an Oni and it does a ghost event, it's going to drain your sanity by 20%. If it's a Banshee and it does a ghost event, it's going to drain your sanity by 15%. All the 22 other ghosts will drain your sanity by 10% whenever they do a ghost event. Using uh, the cursed possessions, except for the tarot cards and the monkey paw, drain your sanity. Staying in the freaking dark, 
drains your sanity. So you wanna turn the lights on, and then once you know those things about what drains your sanity, you can then start thinking about, okay, well, let me learn the different types of ghosts and what thresholds at which they hunt. Meaning, once you hit that sanity percentage, that's when the ghosts can start hunting you, unless you use a cursed possession and trigger a cursed hunt. Majority of the ghosts are gonna hunt at 50% sanity, whereas ghosts like the Thay, and the demon and sometimes the yokai will hunt very early but there's some ghosts that hunt at like 60 but that's a little bit too intricate for this video so once you learn what causes your sanity to drop then you can start thinking about okay what ghosts hunt at what sanity and then you can start being like all right well i'm getting closer to 50 percent so i need to start preparing for a hunt let me go grab my crucifix and my smudge stick so i'm chilling final tip that i want to give is an actual mechanic that you can do and that is breaking line of sight. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you if I can get a death card and get the ghost to hunt me. And now that I'm on 100% sanity from the sun card, uh, that's not gonna happen. It turned off the breaker, it's not a gen, feels good. Okay, death card, death card, death card. There it is. All right, so what I mean by breaking line of sight. So right now, the ghost is upstairs, or it might be downstairs, I don't know. So I'm gonna stand right here. So here it comes. It's very fast, and I died. Okay, so we are back on a new contract because we went up against a Revenant right there. And again, I had my flashlight on. The Revenant immediately detected my equipment and came right to me. If I would have kept my flashlight off, bro, on that last contract where I died, I'd have been fine. But let's figure out where our cursed possession is so we can get the ghost to hunt us again. Oh, look at that. All right, it's the voodoo doll. And uh, fortunately for you guys, I'm the most unlucky Phasma player on the planet. So this is probably going to be a heart pin. Okay, here we go. All right, ghost is close. It's normal speed. All right, so right now, I have my equipment on. The ghost is coming straight to my location. It's a poltergeist. But so what I'm doing right now is I just smudged the ghost. But what I mean by breaking line of sight is right now the ghost is chasing me because it's this table is very small holy shit what the fuck okay so we've had a bit of a of a change of plans here okay uh i died to a poltergeist as you guys just saw i get back to the lobby i wasn't gonna include this in the video but uh i went to just run it back and um we have no money so we're gonna switch it up so instead i'm going to go on to camp woodwind no flashlights no nothing and I can still kind of explain the breaking line of sight mechanic that I'm talking about. Uh, and it'll actually be better because the ghost is gonna hunt us right off the rip because we'll be at zero sanity. When I say we are broke, we are broker than a homeless man, okay? So what do I mean by breaking line of sight? When the ghost sees you, it has a line of sight. But if you do things like crouching behind a table, you can see the ghost, but the ghost can't see you. So doing things like crouching behind a table will allow you to break the ghost line of sight. And what happens is like, say for instance, the ghost hunts me and it has line of sight. So it's hunting. See how it has line of sight right now? So it's gonna come to this corner and you see how it's kind of going away. It's, it's like following me because it's going to the last seen or known location. But sometimes, see, I, I fuck up the, the loop a little bit. But you see how he started going that way? I'm dead. So right now we have line of sight broken. You can do it by crouching behind tables or you can do things like going around a corner. So the idea is to like use the combo of like your smudge, get it to stop targeting you for like six seconds to give you enough time to get away and then break line of sight. And as long as you've got your equipment off and you're not talking, the ghost has no idea where you are. It's gonna come to your last known location, i.e. The, no, the location it's hunting again. But see right now, the ghost has no idea where I'm at. I'm not talking, my equipment's off and this tree is breaking its line of sight. Now, if it sees me, I'm kind of screwed. So that's where your ears come in handy. But see, I don't have, the ghost doesn't have line of sight on me right now. So just doing the simple mechanic and I'm not even using a hiding spot. So it's it seems very simple, but it takes a little bit of time to uh, put into practice. In summary here, okay? First and foremost, you don't necessarily have to worry about trying to break line of sight. Just start with turning on push to talk and turning off your equipment during a hunt, okay? Then start learning to use your equipment to its fullest potential. 
okay so that you survive more just doing those three things alone are gonna skyrocket your survival rate and improve it tenfold then once you get comfortable doing that and kind of get into a routine of like okay the ghost is hunting let me immediately turn off my flashlight managing your sanity is huge learning how to break a line of sight is also huge if you just put these things into practice a lot of this just comes with time dying a lot which if you're watching this video you're probably dying a lot anyways in which case you're on the right track because i'm right there with you as you saw in this video phasma is a game that is is scary and it's a fun game to play on friday nights with your friends while drinking but if you really want to learn more and start getting into the depth of the game and how to actually enjoy it more than just a good scare every now and again, it's really worth it to put in the time and to learn the different pieces of equipment and how to break line of sight and how to make the ghost hunt on your terms rather than falling victim to the ghost hunting randomly, right? Because you have no idea. So anyways, I hope this guide helped you. If it did, leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to find your way back for more content like this and other phasmophobia content, you can hit the subscribe button with notifications on. I recorded this live on my stream. The link for that's down below in the description. I stream almost every night around 8 p.m. Eastern. So anyways, until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll catch you in the next one, okay?